While we can all look back and marvel at the early incarnations of many animal species, sometimes it's harder to notice the changes happening in front of us. Due to climate change, humans encroaching on their habitats, and many more reasons, some animals are forced to evolve in order to continue the survival of their species. In this video, we'll take a look at some creatures who are evolving to adapt better to our modern world. Since humans haven't yet evolved the ability to perceive new videos from the hub as soon as they're released, it's a good thing we have that subscribe button so we don't miss out. Mice. While some of us think that mice are rather adorable, we still don't want wild ones in our house. They can cause a lot of damage, so people resort to using drastic measures to get rid of them. However, many mice have been developing a rare and interesting immunity to common poisons. Horizontal gene transfer is something that had previously only been seen in microbes until very recently. Normally, we receive genes vertically from our parents, but during horizontal gene transfer, genetic material moves between organisms in other ways. This includes hybridization. At a bakery in Germany, a dangerous poison stopped affecting mice who were found to have large portions of DNA from the Algerian mouse, which is usually only found in the Mediterranean. The Algerian mouse is an entirely separate species that happens to be immune to wafferin. Because their diets tend to be deficient in vitamin K, they developed a gene to combat this that has the happy side effect of making them immune to popular poisons. Somehow, the two species bred, creating this beneficial genetic makeup. It's incredible to see this horizontal gene transfer in complex organisms, and the mice are probably pretty happy about it as well. Bed bugs. Perhaps an even more unwelcome visitor than mice, just the mention of bed bugs is enough to make your skin crawl. While evolution usually happens over a long period of time, sometimes it can occur rather rapidly. In fact, it seems that bed bugs are fast on their way to developing an entirely new species due to our efforts to eradicate them. In the 1940s, bed bugs were almost extinct thanks to the widespread use of DDT. However, they came back with a vengeance and some evolutionary advantages to boot. Scientists compared the DNA of 214 bed bugs and found that those that fed on bats were genetically distinct from those that fed on humans. Because humans sleep at night as opposed to during the day the way bats do, the bed bugs evolved to become nocturnal in order to feed. They also developed longer, thinner legs since they no longer needed to cling to bats. They also carry a genetic variation that makes them extremely resistant to pesticides. Bed bugs that get their meals from humans have a thicker, denser, and more wax-like exoskeletons, which help them repel the pesticides. It's estimated that 88% of bed bugs living amongst humans have evolved to block out common poisons. Their metabolisms are also much faster and their life cycle is shorter. Humans. Yes, even we are still evolving to better survive in the modern world that we've created. Humans today are exposed to many more sources of radiation today than our ancestors ever were. Even our drinking water is infused with low levels of radiation. And as we all know, too much radiation is extremely hazardous to your health, causing cancer and heart disease, among other things. Radiation causes illnesses by causing damage to our DNA, but a new study suggests that doctors who are frequently exposed to radiation via x-rays may be adapting to this threat at a cellular level. Interventional cardiologists perform heart operations using catheters guided by x-rays, and this leads them to have high levels of hydrogen peroxide in their blood. But scientists discovered that these doctors also had higher levels of an antioxidant that protects against cell damage, and their white blood cells had more of a protective enzyme. When compared to health workers who don't have much exposure to radiation, the difference is extreme. Senior research scientists at the Italian National Research Council, Gianluigi Russo, claims that their findings clearly emphasize for the first time that exposure to a level of radiation which is considered safe by regulatory standards for interventional cardiologists can induce a profound biochemical and cellular adaptation. Cane toads. Cane toads are a prime example about how human intervention can be hazardous to ecosystems. In 1935, humans introduced the cane toad to Australia, hoping they would control the cane beetle, which was causing widespread destruction of crops. While they did eat the beetles, they then proceeded to consume everything else in sight, wreaking havoc on the ecosystem. 
These cane toads were also forced to evolve in order to survive in their new environment. The particular type of evolution they're undergoing is called spatial sorting. Whereas evolution is typically based on the idea of survival of the fittest, spatial sorting is more like the survival of the fastest. This new evolutionary process does not depend on survival, but instead the fastest dispersing animals tend to pass on their genes quickly. In just a few decades, these toads evolved to have longer legs, allowing them to travel at greater speeds. However, these legs are actually bad for the toads overall, and they cause spinal problems and high mortality rates. The faster the toads moved, the more their territory and potential mates expanded, making mating easier, but survival ultimately more difficult. Rootworms. Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, are a hot topic at the moment. Many people claim they're perfectly safe, while others believe that they can be harmful. Regardless of your feelings about the effect of GMOs on humans, they've had a very clear effect on the rootworm. Rootworms feed on corn plants, so people genetically modified the corn plants to be resistant to the worms. The idea was good in theory, because these worms caused billions of dollars worth of damage to crops in the US. However, in application, all it did was create rootworms that are resistant to the harmful substances inside of the corn. And at this point, this particular strain of corn makes up three quarters of the US corn crop, making it incredibly vulnerable. When the corn was first introduced, it worked great, and rootworm populations plummeted, allowing farmers to reduce their use of pesticides. However, this didn't last as the worms evolved to be able to eat the corn. This means that farmers will have to go back to using insecticides, which are hazardous to the environment. Dogs. Dogs are our faithful and beloved companions, and many of us have grown up with them. Because of this, we're used to their various unpleasant habits like drooling, shedding, and barking. However, it turns out we can blame ourselves for their penchants for barking. While barking is common in domesticated dogs, it's extremely uncommon in wild dogs. Wild dogs make other sounds, such as yipping or whining, but they very rarely bark the way that our dogs do. Anatomical differences in the dogs don't explain away this difference. We know that dogs bark for many reasons, happiness, to alert us to things, and fear. But it turns out that in terms of pitch and repetition, the barks of dogs responding to the same stimuli is similar, except when it comes to play barking. This leads scientists to conclude that domestic dogs bark to alert their human packs to things, making it necessary for their alarm bark to be recognizable as such. However, a happy, playful bark is just a way for them to express themselves, and thus doesn't need to be universally understood by us. In fact, humans can understand the context of a wide variety of barks just by listening to them. So the next time you get annoyed at your dog for barking, you should know that it's humanity's hand in their evolution that's to blame. Fish. In a cave in southern Mexico lives a community of Atlantic mollyfish, Lurking in the cave is a gruesome and serious danger. You see, this cave is called Cueva del Azufre, which translates to sulfur cave. Deposits of natural oil and volcanic activity have caused the water to become enriched with hydrogen sulfide. Naturally, the water in the cave is toxic as well, exposing the cave mollies to concentrations of hydrogen sulfide 50 times higher than the amount considered toxic to aquatic species. These fish are the only ones known to be able to survive in such a poisonous environment. They use aquatic surface respiration, meaning that they avoid some of the hydrogen sulfide by breathing directly at the water's surface. They've also evolved to be able to detoxify the hydrogen sulfide once it enters their body. Oh yeah, and if that wasn't enough, once a year, locals throw poison in their water as part of a religious ritual designed to ask for rain. The poison is made of barbasco root, which contains rhodonone, a powerful anesthetic that is toxic to fish. However, the cave mollies are evolving to become resistant to this poison as well, and it's entirely possible that soon the ritual will have no effect on them. Anoles. Anolis carolinesis are better known as the green anoles, and they've evolved right before our eyes. Within just 20 generations spanning 15 years, they had already made notable physical changes. Scientists wanted to study the invasion of the green anoles from Florida, perpetuated by the brown anoles from Cuba. Both types of anoles are similar in size, diet, and habitat, meaning that there was direct competition for resources. 
They both enjoy perching on low branches and tree trunks. However, soon after the invasion of the brown anoles, the green lizards began climbing higher up in the trees. The green anoles began to develop larger toe pads covered in sticky toes in order to help them perch on the smoother, thinner branches near the top of the trees. This same evolution was observed in six different islands played with the invading brown lizards. If human height matched this rapid rate of evolution, the average male would increase in height from 5 foot 9 to 6 foot 4 in just 20 generations. It's thought that animals are continually evolving, but because the process is so slow, we usually don't notice it. But the breakneck speed at which these lizards evolved have made it impossible not to take note. Tawny Owls Climate change affects animals as well as humans, and can cause them to evolve in different ways. Feather color in owls is hereditary just like hair color is in humans. Gray feathers are dominant over brown feathers when it comes to the tawny owl. In a mixed color pairing, the offspring would be much more likely to have gray feathers. However, researchers in Finland noticed that the population of brown owls was increasing. As winters become increasingly more mild, it's likely that gray feathered tawny owls will disappear altogether. Because the feathers of owls don't change, scientists were able to create color maps of breeding pairs and the resulting offspring. During snowy winters, the mortality rate of brown tawny owls is higher than gray ones, since they stand out more from the snow. But with milder winters and less snow, their populations are greatly increasing. While brown tawny owls once made up about 30% of the population in Finland, that number has now increased to 50%. Scientists worry that in addition to their brown plumage, these owls have weaker immune systems and higher metabolic rates compared to their gray counterparts. So while this may seem like a good thing for brown owls, in actuality, it's a bad sign for all tawny owls. Ants. One possible type of evolution, sympatic speciation, was criticized and rejected by many. Sympatic speciation means that the species splits into two separate species without any geographic separation. However, it seems that this new type of ant species may indeed prove that this is possible. Ants have been crawling around on the Earth since the Jurassic period. It's estimated that they appeared between 140 and 168 million years ago. Researchers studied an old ant colony located under a group of eucalyptus trees at Sao Paulo State University in Brazil. Mythoceptorus galdii ants cultivate fungus and rely on it for nutrients. But within this fungus farming colony exists a parasitic ant, a Mythoceptorus castrator. Rather than helping with the work, these ants eat the food reserves and reproduce while evading the watchful eye of the farmer ants. These parasitic ants are smaller and shinier than the farmers, and they also have wings. A genetic analysis proved that the parasites were both descended from and unique from their host ants. However, some scientists are skeptical of this claim that the evolution occurred without a geographic separation. They want to investigate further whether this is really an example of the long thought possible sympatic speciation. As the world continues to change and evolve, there is no telling how it will affect all the different creatures we share the planet with. While most species don't evolve as fast as the green anoles, there's no doubt that we are still changing to suit our ever changing world. Thanks for watching our videos and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Bye for now.